Hello everyone, I'm Jessica and today we're here for the long-awaited and often requested bookshelf tour. I asked, I believe it was in April, on both Twitter and Instagram which version of a bookshelf tour you would like to see. Sometimes you get ones where you pull out every book and you name the author and the title of the book and then there are ones where you just get an overview of the shelf and what's on it and kind of talk about favorites. Though there were a couple of votes for seeing every book individually, the majority of the votes were for seeing a shelf overview and talking about favorites. Flash just moved the tripod so please excuse the new scenery. I will only be touring the shelves behind me which are my red shelves. Not only are my unread shelves going to be difficult to get to but also because I haven't really read any of them yet I don't feel like I'm gonna have a whole lot to say. So I'm just going to focus on the shelves behind me at this current moment in time, but no worries, it's still like 300 books. No big deal. I'll be going through each shelf, talking about some of my favorites, maybe some of my not favorites, and we'll see how it goes. First I'll give you an overview and then we will get to it. My shelves are from Walmart. They are not the very pretty Billy bookshelves from Ikea. So mine do not go up very high, but it does give me plenty of room for lots of tchotchkes and knickknacks and um, just weird random things that I don't have a place for anywhere else in my room. So that at least is a bonus. And then we will just pan down. It is a little difficult to get this angle because I have my couch right there. There's the end of the couch. As you can see, the bottom is shoes, games, and just weird random books and collections of things, uh, notebooks and some guidebooks, things like that. I live in a house with four dogs and two cats and a parrot who sheds gray fur. I live on a dirt road on a farm. So everything is always constantly dirty, but things down by the floor are always worse. And that's why I chose not to put any books on the shelves by the floor because I would never be able to keep them clean. That's why I only have these shelves. Also, I used some shelves, the removable shelves, from an older bookshelf, so I do actually have more shelves than the typical five that come on them because I have a lot of extra shelves. I had uh, my mom use a power drill and drill in some extra holes and things like that, so that is my red setup. I'm all the way down here, you can't see me. Hi! We're gonna start with this shelf right here this shelf right here. It is all Rochelle Mead with the exception of this book right here which is Something Strange and Deadly by Susan Dennard which I actually just finished the other day and there's not enough room on my shelf next to my Witchland series so and also there was an empty space there so that's where it ended up at. I have the six books of the first series, the six books of the second series which is the Bloodline series. I have the three graphic novels that were published which were Vampire Academy Frostbite and Shadow Kiss, which are the first three books in the Vampire Academy series. I have the 10th anniversary edition of Vampire Academy. I love this cover. It is probably one of my favorite covers of all time. I just absolutely love this cover. And I also have Soundless, also by Rochelle Mead, which is a standalone. We're going down. The next shelf that we will focus on is my first of two Cassie Clare shelves. And this shelf has all of the special editions with the spine art. It took me way too long to come up with the word spine art. So you have the three books of The Infernal Devices and then the six books of The Mortal Instruments. I have the first two in The Dark Artifices. The third book, Queen of Air and Darkness, is not out yet in this edition. I think it comes out later this year but I can't remember when. The Infernal Devices graphic novels, I have all three of those. And then way over here on the other side, yep, yep, right there, there it is. I have the first two books in the Mortal Instruments graphic novels and that's all that's out at this current moment in time. And the lighting in this room just drastically changed so forgive me for the lighting from the artificial light. We were using natural light, now we're on to artificial. This is my Rick Riordan shelf. It starts off with Percy Jackson and the Olympians and then moves over to the Heroes of Olympus series through here. And then here you have the Trials of Apollo, which I actually only have the first three books of because that is all that is published as of current. Then we have the 
three books of the Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, plus Nine from the Nine Worlds, which is a collection of short stories, and then the first two books in the Kane Chronicles, which those are the only two that I have read so far. I just read those this month. Soon there will be something filling this space right here. The next shelf is predominantly witch books of some sort or another. We have the Caster Chronicles, aka Beautiful Creatures, plus the sequel series Dangerous Creatures and then they have Wicked which these two are actually both two books in one. I really 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 love this series when I read it. It has been a long time since I read it. It is due for a reread but it is as of this point in my recollection one of my favorite series that involves witches because it's not all happily ever after. I really like the ending of this series and also they're just gorgeous. And then this is the last book in the series, this is Res Resurrection. So there's five books in the series. These two both have two books and then this one is the third. Then what other witchy books do I have? Toil and Trouble, Undead Girl Gang. Love Undead Girl Gang. I love Undead Girl Gang. I love this cover. I am probably going to also buy the paperback once I get some more money coming in because I really love the cover of the paperback as well, um, which is not something I typically do unless it is like a specific book. I don't usually buy double copies, but I really like the paperback co cover of this as well. And then The Wicked Deep Keeper by Kim Chance. If you've not read this, Kim Chance is a fellow author tuber. I really enjoyed this first book and I have an arc of the sequel Seeker and I will be reading that very soon. And then this is where my witch books deviate to vampires. I have A Night Without Stars by J.A. Eaton or Jillian Eaton. I believe this is the new, this is the new version of the Lola Chronicles. I, I think originally they were by Jillian Eaton and then when she republished they're by J.A. Eaton. Either way, she's a self-published author. I really love this book. I have not read the sequel. I do own it, but I have not read it yet. And then The Coldest Girl in Cold Town by Holly Black. Not my favorite Holly Black, but it's here with the other vampires. And then that little segue gets us over here to the Night World series by L.J. Smith. Each one of these three volumes has three books in it, and there was supposed to be a tenth and final book. It has never been published. These came out in the 90s. Yeah, it makes me want to die a little on the inside, but it is what it is. And these are vampire, werewolf, and witch type series. And then I have my three graphic novels. I have Spell on Wheels and the first two of Buffy the Vampire Slayer season eight. Next shelf. I should have went across instead of up and down. It's too late. If I could turn back time. And then all the way down here on the bottom we have my contemporary shelf. I guess it's not all the way on the bottom because there's a shelf of shoes and coloring books underneath of it but that's outside of the point. So over here you have this beautiful blue whale cup that is what Merlin drinks out of. She will not drink out of the water bowl in their room with the food. She has to have her water over here and it has to be fresh because cats are assholes. I don't know why I have an abominable snowman but I do and so he just lives here as a space holder on this shelf. Some standouts for me on this shelf would be The Hate You Give, obviously. That doesn't go there. These are backwards. Feel better about my life now. The Nowhere Girls, One of the Above, Wink Poppy Midnight, which is not my favorite. It's kind of weird. Uh, the Fault in Our Stars, not my favorite. On the Come Up, What If It's Us, which I just read this month, I believe. All of To All the Boys I Loved Before, Dumplin', Simon vs. 13 Little Blue Envelopes, not my favorite. Geekerella, not my favorite. Dash and Lily's Book of the Dares, not my favorite. Snow and Love, not my favorite. Confess, not my favorite. November 9th, not my favorite. The Duff, hated it. The Third Twin, really liked this one. It was different. And then one of my other favorites on the shelf is Meant to be Broken by Brandy Wood Snow. And I have a full review on this book and I will link it in the description box below, as well as in the cards. And um, I probably have a lot of full review videos for a lot of books on these shelves and I'll link all those in the description box below because I'm definitely not going to be linking all of my Goodreads reviews, but I will link my Goodreads page. That sounds like a lot of work. We are not going to spend a lot of time here, but just to get a general overview, I have my James Patterson Women's Murder Club, the Anita Blake series by Laurel K. Hamilton, the Mary Gentry series by Laurel K. Hamilton, and Strange Candy, which is a collection of short stories. Then I have my Misfits over here that didn't really go anywhere else because they're adult books and pretty much everything else on my shelf is not. The Lies We Told, Paradise by Toni Morrison, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, and Robin Hobb's Assassin's Apprentice. Let's go up a shelf, shall we? As we get to the shelf, I suppose I should mention, I have some what we'll call favorites shelves, and they included the Rochelle Mead, Cassie Clare, 
and Rick Riordan. And then you will find some of my other favorites on these next three shelves. So this shelf has the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer, which I absolutely love. Um, Stars Above, which I just got this year and just read this year, which I only read the Lunar Chronicles last year, so it's not like it's been a long time. Love the epilogue in this. So good. Then I have Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater, which I have not read the rest of the series, but I read this one earlier this year and I absolutely loved it. Kiss the Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Uh, again, just read this earlier this year. Absolutely loved it. And then we have my Harry Potter collection, which includes... Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the Hufflepuff edition for the 20th anniversary edition. I do at some point want to get the hardback copies of the first three books, which I have paperback copies of currently, and probably a new copy of Goblet of Fire because mine does not have a dust jacket on it. And who really cares about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child? It's there because I bought it and so it exists, I guess. And now we are to my second Cassie Clare shelf. A couple of these just got on the shelf today and I'm not completely in love with how it looks. I'm probably within the next six months or so, depending on how many more Cassie Clare books come out in the next year, probably in the next year, I'm going to have to have another Cassie Clare shelf because Cassie is one of the few authors that I do buy second sets of books from. I have the UK cover editions of the Mortal Instruments because they are fucking adorable. I absolutely love the UK cover editions. Just I love the color. They bring so much color onto my shelves and I just I love the artwork inside the designs on the front of these. They are just amazing. I have the Shadowhunters Codex which is actually the dust jacket only. This is the Shadowhunters Codex. I fucking love this. It is so gorgeous, so beautiful. I bought it specifically so that I could make it naked and put it on my shelf. I love it so much. I have my 10th anniversary edition of City of Bones, which is the first book in the Mortal Instruments series, and they are releasing a 10th anniversary edition of Clockwork Angel this year, so that's going to be added to the shelf for sure. Normally I have this one turned out as well um, because I really love the way that this looks on the front. However, I just this month finished reading Lord of Shadows and Queen of Air and Darkness, so I had to put those on the shelves, which means there wasn't enough room to have this turned as it normally is, and this shelf also has the Bane Chronicle and Tales from Shadowhunter Academy. I've already pre-ordered the Ghost from Shadow Market, so that'll be here soon. And again, I'm going to need a new Cassie Clare shelf very soon. Going up. And on the top shelf, which is my last of the favorite shelf, and brings us around to authors that I buy more than one copy of their books, I give you Susan Dennard. So I have Truth Witch, Wind Witch, Sight Witch, and Blood Witch, which are the first four books, well, three books plus a novella, whatever in the Witchland series. I then have a second copy of Blood Witch because I'm crazy and I pre-ordered a copy and I got one from my local bookstore because you know let's represent Sue's where we can. So I have a second copy which I turned out because I love this cover. This is one of my favorite covers like of all time. I absolutely love this cover. Then I have my Truth Witch, Wind Witch, Blood Witch. So my UK cover editions which Blood Witch is the same but for instance Wind Witch and Wind Witch have a similar feel and the same character but are very different covers and I really love the spines on these. I love that they have one of the witch symbols on them. Which you probably can't see from there so it would be nice if I would show it to you. Maybe just a little baby light. There you go. And down here in the corner with just a little bit of baby light you can see the witch symbol. And then they have the title and they have a bigger picture of what the cover is. These ones also have a picture of the cover, but these ones are a lot bigger. So I do have three copies of Blood Witch. Totally proud about that. I have the first two books in The Cruel Prince. I have The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. I have, I actually own the first three books of the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, but my friend Lisa has the first book, so only the second and third book are here at this current moment in time. And then we have Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson, which I love. And then Slayer by Kirsten White. This is the first book in this series, which is based off of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer lore, and I love it. And then Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland, and I'm missing a book. And also that goes over here is the semi-definitive list of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. I, I love Crystal Sutherland's writing. It's not for everybody, but I definitely love it. And then we are on the top right shelf. I have the six books, I think it's five books in a novella in the Lauren Kate series Fallen, and then I believe it's 12 books in the Mark series by 
PC and Kristen cast. And then the four novellas in that series. And then it gets weird. We have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I own the other two books in that series, but I have them in an unhaul pile currently because I didn't like them. I love the first book, didn't like the other two, so they're leaving. Uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism, The Scarlet Reaper, and then What the Dead Want, which I love, but don't really know where else to put it. It's a ghost story, so it doesn't really go with anything else on the shelf, but it doesn't really go anywhere else either. This next shelf is memoirs, autobiographies, and classics. So you have a stack over here that are autobiographies by some different actors, actresses, musicians, things like that. And then in the classics section you have Chronicles of Narnia, Princess Bride, Fahrenheit 451, Pride and Prejudice, and then Tales from Edgar Allan Poe, Bridge to Arabithia, Perks of Being a Wallflower, Notebook, Fahrenheit 451 again. Um, this is the... Whew, how many years anniversary edition? 60th anniversary edition. I knew it was old, but I couldn't remember how old. Uh, and Frank, Scarlet Letter, Gone with the Wind, Catcher in the Rye, which I didn't enjoy, but whatever, it's here. Next, we have my mid-grade and writing books. And on the end, I'm calling it the whatever the hell else section because there's nowhere else to put it. So it starts off with my mid-grade books, Hocus Pocus, Nightmares, the first four books in the Creepover series, the first four volumes of the Witch Graphic Novels, Search for Wanla, Magisterium series by Cassie Clare and Holly Black, some Meg Cabot over here, then my Writing Thesauruses by Angela Ackerman and Becky Puglisi. I have a couple more of these that I need to get, but I do absolutely love these. Uh, Manual for Writers. In <laughs> this is my big fat notebook of English language arts. It's made for like grade four students, but I got it because I suck at English and sometimes, like sometimes I have, I struggle. So I bought that to help myself with the easy things that I can't remember. And then all the way over there by itself is Aragon by Christopher Paolini and uh, well, I didn't know where else to put it, so there it is. We are now on to my post-apocalyptic sci-fi and then the end gets into the whatever the hell else section again. Starts off with the Hunger Games and then the Divergent series. The Diabolic, The First Life by Gina Showalter. I have more of these, but I haven't read them yet. Um, Other World by Jason Siegel and here's some Miller. Again, I have the other, second one of these, but haven't read it yet. Hunter by Mercedes Lackey. This is one of my favorite series. It used to be on my favorite shelf, but I just kind of ran out of room. And so it has moved itself over to here as a post-apocalyptic because it is set in a post-apocalyptic world. It explains it in the book. I don't think this series is talked about enough. On book two, I absolutely love this series. I have not read anything else by Mercedes Lackey yet, but I do plan to in the future. I I absolutely love this series. Another one of my favorites is Empress of a Thousand Skies and Blood of a Thousand Stars by Rhoda Baeza. Love these. Love these so much. And also Starflight and Starfall by Melissa Landers. Love these also. They're more fun sci-fi than like realistic sci-fi. There's not really a whole lot of world building in those, but super fun read, super adventurous. Shatter Me and Smoke in the Sun, Flame in the Mist, meh. Never Night by Jay Kristoff meh. They're there because there's nowhere else to put them that they make sense. And then on this last shelf of my red shelves we have fairies and then the stuff that didn't fit anywhere else. So starting with things that didn't fit anywhere else you have Red Queen. This would have made more sense in the post-apocalyptic section of the shelf but honestly even with taking out the books that were up there that don't fit there was not enough room for this otherwise they would be up there with post-apocalyptic and sci-fi. Then the Rebel Bell series by Rachel Hawkins. The first book of these are really good. The second two were just you should probably just read the first one and forget the second two exist. And then we have the fairies books. I have the Switch series by Amanda Hawking, its follow-up series, Frostfire, and I love these. Again, I don't think these are spoken about enough on booktube either. I absolutely love both of these series. They are so good. And then Between the Blade and the Heart and From the Earth to the Shadows by Amanda Hawking. These are not fairy books. They are Valkyrie, but Amanda Hawking, Amanda Hawking, so they just ended up together. Elemental Reality by Sesha Kono. This is a self-published book by a friend of mine that was written many, many years ago. Hail Queen Rising, Cold Dream Dawning by A.R. Kaler. I have the third book, but I haven't read it yet, but these are really good, so I'll probably be getting to it as soon as I can. Uh, Twisted Fate, Twisted Gift, both by Jesse Elliott, who is a fellow author tuber as well. These are very swoony, very good romance reads. And then the final book on my shelves will be Song of the Dryad by Natalia Lee. 
Natalia is also a fellow author tuber. I absolutely love this book. It was super whimsy, super fun. I really enjoyed it and I cannot wait to read more from Natalia in the future. And then a bucket of bookmarks. Whew, back to my face. Cool. Those are my bookshelves. I'm all sweaty and gross now from crawling around on the floor. It's totally fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of my bookshelves. If there was a book that you've seen that you want to know more about or you have questions about anything that you've seen, please feel free to ask in the comment section below because that's what we're here for. Depending on how much I'm reading, I may start doing these biannually, but I have a feeling that probably within the next six months, if I read what I plan to read, these shelves behind me are going to be completely just like favorite shelves and my like books that I like but don't necessarily love or refer back to all the time will be on the shelves on the walls because as you can see these shelves are pretty full there's not really I mean there's enough room for a couple more if I turn some but other than that there's really not a lot of room left on my shelves for more books which is good but also bad because I have plenty of room on my wall shelves don't worry don't worry for me yet there's there's plenty of space on the wall shelves at this current moment in time because I've been reading a lot I just looked over and found the red scrolls of magic by Cassie Clare and went <laughs> yeah gonna need that third Cassie Clare shelf sooner than you thought kid that is all I have for today I post reading writing and book related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekends so make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see what I have going on in the future so until then I will see you guys next time